we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make a start. So we're, we've, we finished the AGM a little bit early. Thank you very much for uh, staying in your seats um, and staying for this uh, panel discussion on the future sustainability of our disciplines, uh, accounting and, and finance. Um, we've got three, uh, three panelists. Um, Besides myself here at present, we've got uh, Elaine Harris, uh, and online we're joined by uh, Florian and Wen Zhao, who will be who was here a minute ago for the Bar uh, Paper Awards. Will be uh, coming back shortly. So uh, I think we'll make the we'll make a start. And I'll do the uh, the introductions. So um, we have uh, Florian uh, Gebreiter, who's an associate professor of accounting at the University of Birmingham. Uh, Florian's work uh, looks in public sector accountability relationships and uh, uh, in particular. But um, one of the reasons why we thought Florian would be perfect for this panel is a paper that uh, I think it was online a couple of years ago, but it, it, it was published formally last year in Critical Perspectives in 2021, a, a profession in peril, university corporatization, performance measurements, and the sustainability of accounting academia. Uh, I'm also delighted and we've, we've gone now, uh, Professor uh, Wen Jun Hao, who is uh, Chair in Corporate Finance at uh, the University of Edinburgh. Uh, the, uh, Wen Jun has been publishing for a number of years. Uh, I was looking, there's nearly, I, I don't know if you look at these things, uh, Wen, but you know, there's on, I think it's on uh, ResearchGate, nearly 100 publications there, 97, so I don't know if that's a target for you to, to, to look at, but. Uh, um, we thought when would be particularly relevant as well uh, for this uh, panel discussion. The, uh, when is one of the new joint editors, as we saw, uh, of the uh, British Accounting Review, uh, having joined just a, uh, less than a year ago. And then uh, to, to my left here, we have Emeritus Professor Elaine Harris. Uh, Elaine's a Professor of Accounting and Management at uh, Roehampton, is an Associate Editor of uh, BAR, is also the Chair of the Management Control Association. Uh, and uh, again, particularly relevant for, for this panel discussion, Elaine, over the last 18 months, I think it is, has been coordinating the uh, uh, BAFA uh, CPAF uh, mentoring program uh, that we've been trying to develop and bring through uh, the next generation of, uh, of researchers. And so just to kind of set this as well, I, I've been, uh, I've been, involved with the BAFA executive, I suppose, for about 10 years now. And one of the themes that has run throughout all of that, uh, and I know is something that uh, a number of colleagues and members have, have experience of, uh, some very dramatically, but often as a kind of constant pressure in the background in your own departments, is the, the idea that actually, particularly accounting, but we also particularly want to hear on the finance side of things today, the, the pressure to turn accounting into a teaching only discipline because it's very popular among students. We can charge the, uh, this is the argument, so this is where the pressure, we can charge our business schools and management schools can charge the full fees for international students. Uh, we'll get those in, but because it's difficult to get research grants and to publish in four star journals I I I in accounting, that surplus will then be taken from accounting and redistributed to other disciplines in the business school. So that, that's the, the general concern that's been around and something that I've been very aware of for a number of years. So wanted to actually have this panel discussion to start to unpick some of those kinds of ideas, to see actually about the pressures and whether they are similar or different on, 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 for our finance colleagues as well. So we've got, the way we're gonna set this up, we've got, uh, I've got three questions just to briefly go around the panel with each one of those three questions. Each of the panelists has been asked to speak for two or three minutes in answer to each question. And then we should be, uh, finish the panel part uh, with plenty of time for discussion from the floor because we really want to hear from yourselves as well uh, here. And also online we have, you can see online we've got the chat function up. So if you have a question, stick it into the chat function and I will then actually raise it with the panelists for those who've joined online. So starting off, uh, first question, and we'll start, Florian, uh, with yourself. Um, what's your kind of opinion of the, the current health of research within accounting and finance? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank yes, thank you, Stuart. I, I hope, hope you can hear me okay. I've got a terrible echo, echo at the moment, but if it's, it's just, just me, then um, that's okay. okay. Can you yeah, hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. okay. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for organising this. I think it's an important topic, and thanks also for having me. Um, I'm much more familiar with accounting than with finance. I'm, I'm going to focus on on this bit, and unfortunately, we've got when we'll be able to we'll be able to to. Sorry, this is the, the, um, can I can I come back in one second? I've got really strong echo, which is really irritating. I'm, I'm, yeah, we have an, we have an echo. Um, I'll, I'll come back in a minute. Maybe you can go to Elena and then first uh, because it's uh, actually it's gone now. So perfect. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> yeah. So as as I said, um, I'll, I'll I'll come at this uh, more from an accounting perspective. Unfortunately, we've got Ben and I'm sure lots of people in the audience who can give us a better view of those issues from a finance perspective. And uh, on this first question, I'm I'm going to be very very brief because I'll I'll probably go on for a bit longer on on question two and three. So I, in general, I'm I'm very positive about the current health of accounting research. It's, I think it's it's very diverse. It's very rich. It's there's a lot of innovative research going on, and it it has really good engagement with some some of the big issues we're we're facing in society like inequality and sustainability, etc. So I'm I, I'm in terms of the research per se, I'm I'm very uh, positive about this. What I'm slightly more concerned is how well this translates into the current performance measurement regime by which our work is increasingly being judged. And I'll, I'll, I'll come to that later, later in this presentation. Uh, when do you want to come in next? Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Stuart. Thanks for the chance for me to uh, share my thoughts with uh, uh, members and friends of the of BAPA. I've seen some positive change, in my opinion, in the finance area in terms of the stability of the research. Uh, I've summarized in three points. The first one is I'm seeing uh, the increasing uh, interdisciplinary research, such as uh, many topics, uh, many publications in finance, increasingly address issues like uh, inequality. Uh, of income, inequality of gender, uh, the, the security, conflicts, climate change, et cetera. I think by broadening the, the scope of the uh, interest of people in finance, the, 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 top, the area discipline of finance has been uh, uh, grow, growing in a sustainable way. The second one is uh, we've seen that uh, multiple, uh, research, I mean, research methodologies, including the new ones like AI, uh, big data, machine learning, et cetera, has been uh, applied in some uh, finance area. We, I know it's uh, just the beginning, but I think this uh, new tool is going to help us to better understand the, the, the knowledge of finance. Uh, a third one is, why I believe, the, uh, the e equality issue, like the, the, the gender equality and, and LGBT issues, et cetera, has been uh, paying a lot of attention in research that all, uh, include the, the uh, how, we, how we treat our colleagues, uh, regardless of the gender or, or sexual orientation, but also related to the research areas in those disciplines. Like this year, uh, according to a new law in NASDAQ, all the listed firms need to have at least a two, uh, either a female or LGBT uh, uh, board directors. I mean, this, this positive moves have to attract research attention. I believe there's gonna be I an mean, increasing number of papers on those issues. Uh, only a few words about the, neg uh, the negative side. I think uh, compared to our colleagues in economics, I think finance researchers are still not, uh, I mean, finance discipline is not as open as economics for many new research topics. Uh, but of course, as the uh, enter of the uh, British Accounting Review, we definitely create, encourage interdisciplinary research. And many of the papers published in our journal, I mean, use the data of uh, other uh, types of settings now we continue to encourage this. Another thing is in terms of collaboration. If you look at our colleagues in science and technology, they easily have a, a, a large number of uh, co-authors each of, with each of them bring different research, uh, uh, research uh, knowledge or perspectives. But in finance, we are, I know the number of co-authors has been in, increased dramatically in the past few years. The average number of co-authors probably increased from from like 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 1.5 to 2.5, but but I th think still there is a, a a big way to go. That uh, if we can talk with our colleagues in other disciplines to work together, this may be help to us to further advance the the, the research area in finance. Thanks, uh, Stuart. That's great. Uh, thanks very much, Wen. So, um, Elaine, just a reminder of the question: that your kind of assessment of the current health of research in uh, accounting and finance in our community? Okay, thanks. 
I think in terms of the current health of accounting and finance research, I would say that this conference and the attendance at the conference is testimony to the fact that there's, um, there's good research going on in accounting and finance. I am though slightly concerned for the area of management accounting. There's only four papers here at this conference on management accounting, and this has been something that's, that's become um, the norm over the last few years. Um, as chair of the Management Control Association, we do get quite a, a good number of papers for our conferences and for the MARC conference, but it's more from across Europe. So I think there's, there's lots of research going on in uh, continental Europe, particularly on management accounting, but not so much in the UK. And so that does concern me because management accounting is still taught in nearly all the business schools. Certainly I don't know any business school that doesn't have any management accounting teaching in the UK, but I am concerned about the state of management accounting research. And that's also mirrored by the fact that my, my role on the um, bar is um, associate editor for management accounting and we don't get as many submissions um, for that. Wend's nodding. We don't get as many submissions for management accounting as we do for other parts of accounting. So that's where my concern lies. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, again, to answer a second question then, um, I asked the panelists, would you, uh, uh, to reflect on what you thought the challenges or potential opportunities are for, uh, for our disciplines, for research uh, over the coming, uh, the coming period. So again, we'll, we'll follow the same, same order. Florian, if you want to kick off. Yes, thank you, Stuart. But so with this one, I'm 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 going to focus on the on the challenges because this is something that I've I've sort of spent a lot of time thinking uh, about, and I'll talk about this for a longer time. So I've, I've, I'm I'm going to focus on this. But I, I think you hinted at this. I've 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 done a case study of a business school which had a dean who decided to run uh, the school in accordance with a, a small number of key performance indicators namely uh, top ranked papers as measured by the ABS journal ranking, uh, large research grants of ideally 500,000 pounds or more. And the third one was significant ind industry collaborations which brought in money and could be used, used as impact case studies for us. So the Dean decided to hire researchers in business disciplines that could offer a lot in, in these areas. Uh, accounting, didn't offer as much in these three areas. And as a result, the Dean was very reluctant to hire researchers in accounting. Um, instead, he was keen to hire teaching focused staff in accounting, which resulted in a huge reduction in research capacity in accounting and turned the department into a predominantly teaching focused entity. Now, this, this case organization was probably quite an extreme example. But the performance measures that motivated the Dean's behavior, and I'm like REF and, and research funding targets, I'm sure you're aware that they apply to all UK business schools. And, and while there's a few accountants who get big research grants and, and have good impact case studies, generally my impression is that, uh, that accounting does not seem to perform as well on these measures than some other business and management disciplines. And if the emphasis on these performance measures increases further, which given the likely, uh, given the current environment seems likely, I think there's a danger that more business schools will end up directing research investment in other uh, business and management disciplines and develop accounting into a more teaching focused direction. And in, indeed, I, I think there's, there's a, a fair amount of anecdotal evidence that this is already happening. So my, my case organization is, is unfortunately not the only UK business school where accounting research has effectively been decimated over the last few years. And there's also the example of two very high profile London based uh, universities which have built up fantastic business and management uh, schools in the, in the last few years. But there's a lot, lot of uh, great researchers across business and management disciplines, except for an accounting which is, which is taught as a teaching only uh, discipline. There's, there's no research going on. And I'm also aware that, that many accounting departments uh, are struggling to recruit, especially at the professorial level, because there just aren't enough accounting academics who fulfill their expectations uh, their university have for, for these posts. So I've, I've written up my case study uh, in a paper, I, I think, uh, I think uh, Stuart has mentioned it, and I'll, I'll, I'll quickly share it, share it here. Um, so the, 
it goes into these issues in, in, in much greater detail. So and it also explores some of the, the teaching elements of this. So if, if, if you're interested, please please have a look. It, it explains things much, much better than I, I, I was able to in the in the in the in the one or two minutes I, I, I have here. Um, and uh, perhaps as a as a as a final uh, as a final reflection. So this this obviously I come from this as an accounting perspective, but it's 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 perhaps mentioning that that finance suffered a very similar fate as the accounting department at my case organization. It being concluded that other business uh, and management disciplines offered more in terms of research funding and impact. And consequently, the team decided to effectively disinvest the school from finance research. So both accounting and finance uh, research was really, really uh, largely, uh, certainly greatly reduced at, 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 at this, this organization. Thank you. That's great. Uh, thanks, Florian. And I think uh, the, the paper brings out a, uh, an important aspect of this dynamic, which is about the environment uh, environmental factors and the performance measures. So it's not just where it's, what I laid out earlier was maybe an economic imperative in terms of redistribute, making surpluses and redistributing that elsewhere. It is also about the performance measures that, we've, uh, that we're all subject to. So when uh, challenges and potential opportunities. Uh, thanks. I'm going to start from the challenges. I think uh, finance as a discipline increasingly inc require researchers to use uh, different types of uh, 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 research tours and draw from different uh, disciplines. Uh, initially, it's like uh, we people learn from psychology and, uh, and start work on uh, behavior finance, or people work on like uh, identification strategies for color inferences. But nowadays, it's like uh, more and more uh, econometric tours become available for us to use, such as uh, uh, special uh, econometrics like machine learning, AI, etc. As a, uh, I mean, a, a academic like us, when we, we, we have plenty of things to do, like teaching, research, etc., we, we it really uh, is a challenge of, of for us to 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 spend time to learn some new uh, 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 skills uh, to in order to apply them in our teaching and research, uh, because I think um, our competitors nowadays is like uh, uh, newspapers or reporters, many of them can run regression models and write quite insightful, insightful uh, coverage articles. So what, what, then the question is, what else we can offer? So we have to improve our skills in order to I mean, uh, 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 provide more uh, uh, new knowledge uh, to, the, to the area of finance. And talk about opportunities. I see the opportunity from the uh, like big data because initially when we people talk about the topic of finance, we, we refer to like a listed firms of the U.S. companies. Uh, in the U.S., uh, this seems uh, the, the, the only large sample people can examine. Uh, but nowadays things have changed. A lot of studies start work on the uh, startups, enterprise, uh, uh, fintech, and, and more recently like Bitcoin, Metaverse, uh, non fungible token, initial coin offerings, etc. All those data, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, provide us a lot of uh, research opportunities. And in addition to those uh, newly emerged database, all, uh, with the development of, uh, 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 I mean, the, in other disciplines such as like history studies, uh, a lot of the novel database based on historical event has been constructed. For myself, for example, I work on like uh, culture issues in the history, how that are gonna influence modern financial outcomes such as the witchcraft in uh, Africa. The, the pandemic happened in, in Africa in the history, uh, such as uh, uh, CC, uh, caused by CC fly, et cetera. All those uh, issues, I mean, all those data give us opportunities to, uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, to, 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 to provide new insights in, in knowledge of finance. But again, as I said earlier, we're gonna need some new research tours in order to make a good use of those database. Thanks, uh, Stuart. Great, thanks, Wen. Um, so challenges, opportunities, Elaine. Okay, thanks. Well, I think I, I agree that um, Florian identified some important issues in, in his paper. But I think if I'm not wrong, the case study was pre-COVID. Um, what I see is that post-COVID um, that's reflected in a lot more business schools. So I think the pressure um, in institutions has been greater. The financial pressure um, has meant that 
I think there's less autonomy in accounting departments and in business schools. I think accounting departments and business schools have had to take extra students because universities have said that's what they need to do to, um, to improve their financial situation. Uh, that might not be in the whole sector and certainly there's likely to be differences in the post-92 um, and the older universities in terms of their financial resilience. Um, but we've certainly seen, I think, less autonomy um, at the discipline level and more imposition. And certainly as a former um, head of department of accounting, I used to like enough autonomy to be able to recruit new staff with potential. And when the decision making goes to the center of the university to people who can't make that judgment because they don't know anything about accounting um, or accounting research, they're looking for papers already published um, to even recruit at the, at the first level. And therefore, there's a lot more people being recruited to teaching only contracts rather than full um, contracts with research time. And I think the research time has been squeezed, um, even with those people who, who would not ordinarily be a research active academic. So I think there's, there's certainly a lot of issues and challenges for us um, in that context. And there's been a lot, as we've commented yesterday at the um, CPAF meeting, the Conference of Professors of Accounting, we've lost quite a lot of uh, accounting and finance professors recently through early retirement, earlier than would be normal perhaps, and um, also redundancy schemes and reorganizations in some universities. Um, but maybe we could turn that round and see it as an opportunity. Uh, I know that there's at least one or two others um, I can see in the audience here who said the same as me recently that we've retired in order to um, to get back to our research and become more of the academic we wanted to be. <laughs> so maybe that could be seen as an opportunity too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That reminds me. That's the uh, reminds me of the Tony Benn thing when he retired from Parliament. He was retiring from Parliament to get involved with politics. <laughs> Okay, uh, so final, uh, final question then. So we've talked about some of the challenges and some of the opportunities. Uh, concrete steps, have you got some ideas and suggestions that we can kick out and we can start to talk around what we might be able to do to bring back in, in our departments and uh, management skills and business skills? Florian. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to the three performance measures I, I had identified in my, my previous answer that that was top ranked publications which many business schools now define via the ABS list and there's funding and there's impact. I think I think the ABS list is in theory should be the, the least of our problems. Um, I'm, I, I suspect almost all the universities present at this conference will be signatories to DORA, the San Francisco Declaration on Research Assessment which demands that we should assess the individual work of academics rather than just uh, on, on their own merits, rather than just looking at, at journal rankings and in, impact factors. And I think, I think this is a, a very powerful argument that we, that we really make, need to make in recruitment and promotion panels to, to make sure that just because we don't sort of those, a candidate doesn't look good according to what is uh, ultimately a a list with very tenuous intellectual foundations uh, that this shouldn't uh, prevent us from, from uh, appointing and promoting uh, good candidates. And I, I, think, I think more generally, I, I think we need to have a reflect a little bit uh, more about this list, which, which in many ways has been sort of, people have almost uh, sort of, uh, it, it has come to shape the, the uh, sense of, of value of, of, of a lot of accounting researchers. And I'm, I'm not sure whether this is really justified by the, the work that is, that is published in, in, in the, in the uh, journals that, that, we, uh, that the list regards as, 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 as the leading journals. <clears throat> and I, th I think funding and impact is, is a lot more difficult. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if I, I have an answer uh, about uh, for this one. The only thing I can think of is that as, as a community, perhaps we can try to identify people or projects which, which have good potential for funding and impact 
and 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 I'm 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 aware that often these people get get support from within their institutions, but perhaps we can even like work across in institutions if there's somebody better suited to support and perhaps mentor somebody with good potential to really make sure that because it's not it's not just an, an issue for for a university I think it's also an issue for, for us as a discipline that we have at least some people who have good funding records who have good impact partly because it, it makes sure that we have a presence in, in these discussions partly of course they can then uh, as they gain more experience they can then uh, pass it on to to new people etc I think another issue that, that's really important is that I, th I think we, we need to have some accounting and of course also finance people involved in the leadership of, of business schools and, and universities. So if, if, if we're involved in these, these roles, then there's somebody at the table who's willing to make an argument for, for accounting or, or, or finance. If, if, if there isn't, then nobody's going to do it on, on our behalf. And then finally, I've, 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 I think another really important thing is succession planning. Like if, if, you, if you find yourself in the position of being uh, the, the last professor of accounting at the university and you, you're thinking of going elsewhere or retiring, that is of course very much your, your prerogative. But what I'd encourage you to do then is, is to, to make sure that before you leave, uh, to, to see if you, if, you, if, you, if you can find somebody somebody new to take up this role because once once the last accounting professor has has left the building again it's very unlikely that somebody will make an argument in, in, in favor of accounting so it's important that we have a voice in business schools and that, that we use this voice great thanks Florian uh, when uh, thanks uh, Stuart um, well, talking about the steps, I think uh, the uh, inclusion and diversity are very, very important. And BAFA has made a very good lead on this. Uh, so uh, I'm going to speak uh, as a, uh, uh, one of the editors of the of the of the bar because uh, we've uh, taken a number of approaches to support junior researchers, such as organizing workshops for them uh, before they submit the journal officially to the to the to the to the journal, uh, submit the paper before, uh, to the journal, and also. Uh, we worked with some uh, associations in other parts of the world, like the African Accounting Finance Association. We set up a female research award to encourage uh, female researchers in the uh, in African countries, etc. And also, uh, uh, when we uh, uh, add new editorial members uh, in, in, to the to, to, to the editorial board, we also consider always consider the, uh, the 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 gender diversity and make sure that people are. Uh, we include people who are in the different stages of their uh, career. I think all of those uh, will be very important for the uh, discipline to grow health uh, in a healthy way. And uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, we, uh, we've organized a number of uh, special issues to encourage uh, finance research to draw from, I mean, draw new knowledge, new theories from other disciplines, such as uh, so uh, sociology, uh, political science, legal studies, environmental issues, et cetera. Uh, so we pr provide this uh, publication opportunities for them to uh, use the know knowledge of other disciplines to grow our own discipline. I think in this way, the pie of the finance can uh, grow bigger. And this way we're gonna uh, uh, make, mix our knowledge more relevant to the society and to be able to address many uh, important challenges uh, uh, to the world such as uh, uh, equality and uh, inequality and environmental issues. Uh, so that's, that's all, all, all my thought, uh, Stuart. Great, thanks, Juan. Uh, Elaine? Yes, I think the, when I think about how we can um, address some of these challenges and issues, I think the key thing is the academic community working together um, as a collective and also as smaller teams, but certainly team working and, thinking about how BAFA and its um, subgroups can help in particular. Um, I have one or two ideas. I think that uh, we, we should find creative ways to perhaps reduce the, the burden of teaching as in some institutions the numbers of students have gone up and the numbers of academic staff have gone down. Um, it does need um, a more creative approach to teaching so I think the accounting education SIG and the CDAF group um, can probably do a lot to help us um, 
in terms of new, new ways of working to, to manage the challenge of supporting increasing numbers of students and because of the pandemic, increasing numbers of, of students that need more support. Um, so working smarter and working in teams and not reinventing the wheel, so sharing possibly um, approaches to assessment and um, reducing the burdens of marking and so forth can all perhaps be um, ways of helping to free up more time again for, for research. I think focusing on um, BAR and, and the editorial board and what they can do, I think we've got to be a bit kinder to our colleagues um, as gatekeepers. I think that sometimes recently I've seen some rather unkind reviews that weren't necessary. There's not enough people um, being given the positive encouragement to to perhaps um, revise and resubmit as they should be. So I'm seeing perhaps more papers being rejected. I prefer personally to try to give people a way forward, even if the paper that's submitted isn't um, in any way ready for publication. Uh, I would encourage all reviewers to try and find positive ways. Um, there are a lot of good reviewers who do this already, but I think more reviewers um, should think about how the paper can be shaped and reshaped to be able to be publishable. Um, so being kinder, I think sometimes we're our own worst enemies in terms of um, uh, journal reviews. And then um, moving to uh, research and funding and impact, I think we need to um, return to, for those who, who came from professional background or get in touch, stay in touch with our professional roots, um, in order to help with knowledge exchange and impact agendas. And then um, what else BAFA can do? Um, I think BAFA's got to be um, willing to change. I think um, we don't want the academy to become a Kodak. We've got to have um, creative ways of, of working. Um, so I'm going to make one suggestion, which is obviously my, my hobby horse, and thank you for the opportunity to do that. Um, and that um, is mentoring. So we do have a research mentoring scheme. It was launched 18 months ago. So far, I've had some very good feedback, both from mentees and mentors. Uh, we're just launching this week. Um, the applications are opening for cohort three. And so um, I do have with me some printed versions of the application form. So if there's anybody here who thinks they would like a mentor, particularly if you're working in a department or an institution where you don't actually have a research mentor allocated to you um, at present. Um, so we do have a, a scheme whereby um, I receive the applications and look for a, the best subject match I can find. To, and I would also encourage those of you in the room who are not already mentors but have the necessary experience. You don't have to be a CPAF member, you don't have to be a professor, but if you've got research experience and you're willing to help an early career researcher, then please, I've also got forms where you can um, give me an expression of interest to become a mentor. And so the mentoring scheme is, is one of the, the ways I think we can try to help um, the researchers who are facing these current challenges in their, in their departments. Um, so I will ask for a slide to be put up now just for those who are unfamiliar with the scheme and if anybody is interested in being a mentee or a mentor please come and see me afterwards. But my final point would be, um, I'm sure Stuart wants to open it up to the floor, what other suggestions? Let's create some sort of virtual suggestion box. If you want to make a suggestion now or in the coffee break, great. But also, if you want to email any of us with suggestions after you've had a think about it, we're welcome to those. Thank you very much. That's great. Thanks, thanks Elaine. Thanks, Wen. Thanks, Florian, for your input so far. Of course, you don't get off uh, that easily because now we're going to open it out for any questions or comments, uh, either physically from the floor here. Uh, Tevin's going to be the uh, roving mic person uh, in this session or we'll be um, uh, monitoring the chat as well. So anybody online, if you've got a question, stick it in the chat and I'll read it out uh, at an appropriate time. So um, over here, Tegan, we've got uh, Axel and then John. Uh, irrespective of what happens to education and the disciplines, 
importance of finance in society is not going to go away easily. Uh, I think given the climate crisis, one of the biggest challenges is about leadership in finance and what good leadership in finance looks like given the challenge of sustainability. So I would like us as a, as a, as BAFA to think hard uh, about that issue because I've just done a literature review where basically the subject of leadership and the subject of finance just do not go together. So there's lots of literature on leadership, lots of literature on finance, but when you put the two together, the only literature is what bad crooks and uh, bankers are in finance. So the, what bad leadership in finance looks like. So that's actually a very interesting challenge to have. And that can also mean a lot of very interesting things about how we educate the future sustainable finance leaders of the planet so how what our curriculum would look like what our research could look like and how ethics culture and faith i mean i'm i'm going to connect the diversity point of view uh, as well to it because i think that's again hugely important you know with we know with the sustainability crisis we have to involve all cultures and faiths uh, in transforming their behavior to be more kinder to the planet, to one another, to society, etc. So here again, there's a fantastic, and if you look at the makeup of this room, we've got tremendous diversity and uh, lots of people of faith who very often have to be silent about their faith in the secular academy. But I'm kind of encouraging, please bring your faith forward because the technical ethical education in accounting and finance has completely failed. All the professional bodies, and, and I'll give you two classic examples. KPMG partners in New York a couple of years ago were caught cheating in their ethics exams by sharing the answers to those ethics exams with the other. And then two years later, PwC partners in Canada were caught with the same problem. So that tells you, forget about the crime, it tells you the attitude to ethics. Ethics is about passing an exam. And all these professional bodies, if you look at their history, their foundation was public interest and ethics. And all they are doing today is, if you look at the ICAW website, they'll say, oh, we put ethics on every level of our exams. You know, they have to write about sincerity, honesty. But what does sincerity actually mean? It only means something if you connect it with your culture, your faith, your upbringing, your belief. It doesn't mean anything if it's a code of ethics. Sorry. So there is. So so I say the broader point is leadership in accounting and finance. It could actually leadership could actually raise our profile because it's quite a big uh, issue generally within the business school and business education. We should involve professional bodies also in engaging in that dialogue. At the moment, they are not giving leadership. Uh, in accounting and finance as well. And third point I'd like to make, in, and this is related to the money point, I feel very, very angry. We are the cash cows of the business school and we are the cash cows of the university. We shouldn't be asked to find a single penny of grant funding, right? But we don't have the research to back it, but it's not hard to do that research. BAFA should commission a research study of the amount of money accounting academics through the teaching bring to the university. And we use contribution analysis this time, right? So contribution <laughs> to variable, to fixed costs. So look at salaries and look at student numbers, multiply them by fees, income. So it's not a hard calculation and we will be bringing millions and billions. And then that data could be used by each department head Shraddha is about to be head of Open University Accounting Department. She can go to the department and say, look, this is how much money we are bringing to you. So shut up about grants. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Atal. I, I think we'll take John's yeah. question as well, and then we'll go back around the panel. Uh, and I'm aware there's a couple in the chat as well uh, that we'll come to then after that. John Holland, Glasgow University. I agree with much of the last speaker's comments. The, the problem that Florian um, refers to 
It's been around for 40 years. Academics in the 70s in, in, in accounting had great trouble gaining legitimacy within a business school or within the cognate disciplines around them. And part of the solution at the time was they part migrated in accounting, financial accounting and management accounting towards those disciplines, sociology in particular, psychology, and they gained, they gained legit legitimacy with their colleagues, which enhanced their power in the, in, 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 the, in the academy, the wider academy. And maybe we should think along that historical solution and try something again like that. I mean, I think that um, we need to find other connections with these disciplines that are coming from our end, from our strengths, and from de empirical developments in our field. And just one example I can give is the development of integrated reporting. Um, run by now the Value uh, uh, VRF Foundation. Um, this could act as a bridge between these other business school disciplines and financial accounting and management accounting. It talks about the business model, it talks about behavior, it talks about the human context, but it's a, an accounting idea designed to improve accounting. If we can get work with them maybe we can start to get them in that area. We can again get them to understand what it is we're doing. That may be part of the problem. And if we're publishing in part in their journals and they're publishing in part in our journals, perhaps we can bridge this gap. But I repeat, this is an old problem. We need to reinvent the way we approach the rest of the academy without, be, without giving up the uniqueness of our discipline. Okay. Right. Thanks, John. Um, so, anybody want to come in? Florian, when, Elaine? Um, I, I could quickly say something. So, um, the the argument about the the funding we bring in through uh, through teaching students. This, my understanding is that at my case organization, this this argument was made extensively to the dean, and the dean said, "Yeah, sure, you bring in a lot of funding." And I, I can support this by hiring lots of teaching focused uh, lecturers in accounting, which, by the way, do an excellent job at, at teaching those students. They do it in a very cost effective way. And they also get very good uh, student evaluation. And he, he was very much against the idea of what, of what he called the cross subsidization of, of teaching and research, which I think is also government policy. So I, I, I sympathize with this argument, but I, I, I uh, unfortunately, it doesn't it doesn't uh, cut uh, with with everyone. Um. Thanks, Florian. When Elaine, I would just say to John that the, the good news. There's a guy. Okay. Uh, when do you want to come in or will I go to the questions in the chat? Uh, well, just a very quick one, I think. Um, well, the, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely true. Accounting finance contribute a large proportion of the wealth uh, to the I mean, income to the university. My, uh, myself is just to uh, think what, what, how, how long the trend can continue. Because if you look at education in the U UK, majority of the students in, enrolled in this program, especially on post, post postgraduate program, they are uh, predominantly from like, uh, like China, India, right? So. Uh, I'm not sure how long the trend can continue because uh, uh, China is having its own problem in development, especially during the COVID and because of related to the zero COVID policy, either students could not go abroad as, as, as they, uh, when they want to, or maybe because no longer can, many of them can afford it. So if that happened, it's gonna be a huge impact on the, on the uh, 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 I mean, the, uh, our discipline as well. So, uh, uh, so m m my point is, we possibly need to think about what else we can offer right, to the people to choose. Uh, so in addition to the traditional accounting finance, whether, whether there are some new areas with uh, accounting finance bridge with other discipline could be something which can create opportunities for people to take. Great, Th thanks, Wen. Are we there? Okay. Yeah. Integrated reporting is one of the areas that we had the most interest in from the mentor, mentees in the mentoring scheme. So I think that will work as well. 
Sorry, we need, sorry, John, we need the microphone so as everybody online can hear you. It's interesting, that, how, can you hear me? This, yeah. this problem of history, of legitimacy of accountancy in the business school or amongst cognate disciplines was also suffered by finance in the 40 years ago. For, um, uh, and finance went the way of hard microeconomics and did not establish a multidisciplinary link and did not establish these connections out. And it's now failing. So we know this is part of the right solution for us. We just need to reinvent it. Great, thanks. Okay, so um, Pauline Wheatman uh, is online. There, there you are, and now on screen. Yeah. Pauline, do you wanna go ahead? Hi all, I'm gonna join John in the history lesson, but I'm gonna say that BAFA, CPAF and CDAF need to fight for the quality of accounting education and research-led accounting education. And I go back 40 years when I was a member of the Board of Accreditation of Education Courses. I eventually chaired it. And we, when we went round, principals, vice principals and deans took notice of us. And we raised the quality of accounting. We raised the resource profile of accounting because we threatened to discredit. And we once discredited a very prestigious university that I won't name. And they said, you can't do it. And we said, we've just done it. We got it back again. But it was a way of persuading institutions to devote the resources to accounting education. I mean accounting education because that was the area we were looking at. The resources to accounting education that it deserved. And we did that. And that worked for a period. And we know the professional bodies were there. That, that particular lever has gone. But you have a new lever in business schools in triple accreditation. AACSB, Equus, AMBAR, they all have research-led education in their criteria. And those of you who have any power, any presence, or any influence at all in AACSB, Equus, and AMBAR should be insisting that those bodies ask about research-led education in, in, in accounting. And I'm not being disrespectful for teaching fellows because they are fantastic. I know they do a really good quality program, but the fact is you can't have research-led education without a balanced team of senior professors, senior lecturers and readers, as well as junior teaching fellows and junior staff. You need the whole range to give students that accounting education experience. And I would like to see BAFA, CPAF and CDAF fighting for accounting education in a modern way, as much as we did in the Board of Accreditation 40 years ago. And believe me, it did work. We did get the resources allocated. And I believe that accounting education is the route to bring in this research and the resources that you, you rightfully need and that Florian has described as disappearing. And that doesn't in any way detract from the argument about the quality of teaching fellows and there may be a place for teaching fellows. And I know they're good, I know who they are, but we must have a balance of senior research-based accounting. And that means adequate pro professorial support and that's gone. So that is my plea to anybody with any influence at all, particularly in accreditation, through those triple accredited bodies to make sure that we have research-led accounting education for our students. Thanks. That's great. Thanks, Pauline. Uh, very insightful points. Uh, just before we go back to the panelists, we've got a uh, comment or question there from, uh, uh, my eyesight's going, so I think it's Nana. Um, in other words, is there something researchers in other disciplines, this is mainly geared towards Florian and uh, uh, Florian's outline so, um, points, uh, is there something that researchers in other disciplines do to be more successful than accounting researchers are not doing uh, that we can learn from? So um, again, Elaine actually would reverse the order this time. So, yeah, there you go. Um. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I think you actually might need to come back to me. I, I, uh, I think or, or, uh, anything about what Pauline said as well. Well, I think what Pauline said, yes, I would um, agree with much of what Pauline said. And I think it doesn't have to be necessarily the accrediting bodies, but most of us senior academics are invited to be on validation panels for programmes. And we can certainly say that um, the validation or a revalidation or review of a set of programs that there should be adequate resourcing for research informed teaching. Absolutely. Yeah. I, certainly, <coughs> I, I know myself, and I think it's some, it is potentially a trick that we miss on this. 
uh, because I came out, my, my early part of my career was in a post-92 institutions, uh, mm -hmm. teaching a lot of professional exams. And of course, there, the idea of research-led education just doesn't happen. It's the textbook. You know, that's what, that's what, you're, taught, what you're taught to. Um, and it was only moving into research intensive forms that I even heard that term, research-led education. And it wasn't until I was in the, uh, that kind of institution that I even had the confidence to say to a student, read this paper as part of the prescribed reading. So there's definitely there are, uh, there are aspects here that I think we could use. So um, when Florian, uh, do you want to come back on the questions or comments from Pauline and Nana? Yes, so uh, thanks, Pauline, for that point. I, I, I think it's a really good argument. And I, so this is this is the one thing that that even the most sort of managerial uh, list business school deans they they really rely on the income from accounting and and finance program. So if there's any way we can link accounting research to this income stream, this would I'm just thinking, would the dean of my case organization would that be able to persuade him? And I, I think that's the one uh, that that would do the trick. So if 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 we could like do something through AACSD or something like that to, to really emphasize or to link the the, uh, the uh, accounting education to uh, an ongoing and and uh, research presence, I, I think that that would be uh, really important. And if if, if I, I think that's something that 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 we need to investigate. Um, in, in terms of um, the uh, Nana's question, <coughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't sort of investigate your, your question as part of my project, but anecdotally, I, I, I can say a few things about this. So on the funding, there's a couple of issues. Firstly, I think a lot of the research, certainly I'm doing and many people in accounting and the same may be true uh, for finance, it doesn't actually need much. I I never thought, okay, I need I need lots of money to do my research, and and that sort of when I apply for research funding, it's often it comes down to okay, I'm doing this now for the sake of getting some research funding because the powers that be um, will mm. tell me that I need to get some research funding, and of course the mo mo the motivation is a very different one if, if I actually need that funding to actually do the research I want to do. In that case, the motivation is a lot stronger. And there's also some suggestion that especially funding bodies like ESRC, that they sort of have certain preferences which don't tally very well with, with what we're doing in, in accounting. And again, in, in, in terms of impact, I think there's some structure, structural factors here. I think there was a buffer paper from five or six years ago which, which emphasized that in, that with a lot of the sort of accounting and finance research, the, the, the clearest path to impact would be perhaps in to, to get standard setters to acknowledge the, the impact of the work we're doing. But apparently they're very reluctant to do so. So that sort of cuts off like a, a very obvious uh, impact to, to uh, avenue to, to impact for us. And again, there's certain there's certain academic fields where it, it, it just lend themselves much more easily um, to to impact. Um, so I've, I, I think that there is there's definitely some some sort of underlying factors here, and perhaps some, someone can look into these. Great. Right. Uh, when? Yeah, just a, a, a quick observation I and mean, comparison between the finance, accounting, and other discipline. Like people in technology and science, they have so many journals to publish, and many of them they can publish the paper after one round of review. And also, uh, the each issue includes a large number of papers. I've seen accounting finance papers that has also been published in those journals nowadays, such as the journal is called Sustainability. It's an open access journal. Your people pay a lot in order to publish there. But surprisingly, the, the impact factor for that journal is, is quite high. It's quite positive. So it looks like, I mean, people in other disciplines have a easier game to play than us. We usually go around like four rounds of reviews. One paper take like three years to publish. Uh, so I'm, 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 and also the people can co-author with like uh, possibly as many as like 10 or 20 co-authors. And for us, we rely on ourselves. To, to work on many things. So I'm, I'm just thinking whether that might be a direction of, uh, uh, of the future research in accounting. I'm not saying it will be, I'm just saying, uh, I mean, that there might be a way to, to, to change the, 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 the current game that we are, we, 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 we are playing with. Thanks. Great, thanks. Well, I, I think we've got time maybe for one more question uh, from the floor here. Uh, 
as soon as how our uh, distinguished academic is here from last year, Gloria, if you want to. One thing that hasn't been said is the need for accounting um, academics to try to be more outwardly facing. There's a lot of inward looking at, at things and the belief that we don't need money to do it. To, to work on our research. We should actively be searching for things that we can do that needs money, that requires us to be outwardly facing. And I think if we are more outwardly facing, moving away perhaps from uh, a lot of the focus on what the corporate reports, the financial reports are saying, I mean, there's absolutely a need for that. I'm not, I'm not dissing that at all. But there are other societal big problems that if we can join with others in the business school, others in the engineering department, we can contribute too, because we need to follow the money, and the money is with the others, and, and yet the others also need us in order to be able to provide, I think, valuable, relevant research. The, the reason why I think the, um, uh, the uh, uh, professional bodies uh, not supporting us or the reason why our research we, we should ask ourselves why is it that our research just stay on in, in the in the libraries why aren't our research drawn upon for policy uh, and the like and i think if we can get an answer to that question then we find a way of actually engaging with with the powers that be because it's all a power game it's all about following the money it's all about societally what's going to drive change and how can the accountant contribute towards that and i think that it's a different way of, of thinking because i mean in in my institution we don't accept the argument that research doesn't need funding you know we don't we, we've stopped accepting that initially when i was in the um when i was in the department i i could understand that argument that all I need to do is to spend a lot of time in the library. But actually, if you want research that has impact, if you want research that is able to change society, that's able to contribute, you may have to go outside. And I think that's a bit that we should strategically find how we're going to support junior colleagues to, to move in that direction. That's great. Thanks, Laurie. Well, I, I, yes, absolutely. I appreciate there's a number of people who have stuck their hands up and we've just we've run out of time. Uh, I, I hope that actually that this discussion is a, a starting point uh, and is something that we will continue on. I, um, you know, I think it was uh, or Pauline mentioned as well about the role that BAFA, uh, CPAF and CDAF can play. So there, there is stuff that we can do within our, our subgroups. Um, just very briefly, any last closing comments from, from the panelists? Literally one or two sentences, if you've got them. Um, Florian? Yeah, just um, as I said, uh, perhaps I'm sort of more, more invested in this than, than, than most because of, because of the case study I've done. But um, yeah, I, 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 think, I think it's a huge issue for, for us as an academic discipline. And sometimes the, the, uh, the response, I get, like I've, I've been talking to, whether, whether they like it or not, I've been talking to a lot of people about this. And sometimes the response is like, yeah, maybe, but you know, my place is okay, so why, why am I bothered? And the, the, the problem is that your, your place is okay now, but you, you always want that dean away from being that place. <clears throat> And also, if, if even if your place is okay, um, where are your PhD students going to get jobs? Where uh, the, the place I, in my case, organization, I greatly doubt that you'll have many good PhD students coming out of this place anymore. So we, there's a reduced pool of, of talented academics you can hire. So it, it has a real impact on the on the uh, research base in our discipline. So um, yeah, please please Great. think about it. Cheers. Thanks, Florian. When? Last uh, comment? Yeah, I just think that we are stronger by working collectively. BAFA provides exactly the platform for us to, to, to have our voice heard and to make the positive change, especially when BAFA have more international members to join, join it. We can learn from the experience of other, the practice of other countries to address those issues. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Len. Elaine? 
Yeah, I hope those people who had their hands up who didn't get to ask a question might have been going to make a suggestion. So <clears throat> can I keep alive the sense of the virtual suggestion box if anybody has got um, comments and helpful suggestions that we should actually then take those on board and share them so that the chairs of CPAF, um, BAFA, CDAF actually um, keep these things on their agendas. Great. Okay. Uh, just before I formally draw this to a close, I'd like to, um, we would do this for Wen and Florian as well, but you're not here. So uh, you don't get a bag with something nice inside it, but Elaine does. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.